Marx believed that social inequality would be reduced by giving all people the same amount of income and the same amount of equality. Weber, on the other hand, believed that just because they were all given the same equality did not mean that they would be given the same power. Power would be given to the government and the working class would still be at a loss of power. Number four. How does stratification impact social interaction? Say, for example, someone is homeless. They're poor, they're lonely, they have no job. There's no way that they're going to be moving up in society if they don't get a job and they don't work. Say they have a disability, a mental disability, and there's no way they're going to be able to find a good paying job that will be able to uh, get them to work up in society. These people are not going to be able to uh, have as much influence, say, in the government <clears throat> or in politics at all. These people are not going to be interacting with people up higher in the social level. They're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be talking with executives, they're not going to be talking with CEOs, and they're certainly not going to be friends with uh, ultra-rich people. On the other hand, ultra-rich people are not going to be as closely related and tied with homeless people or poor people. This social stratification makes such a wide gap that many times people live in their own little tight-knit world and do not get to expand out and, and interact with other people just because they're stuck in their own in their own class. Number five, we are talking about conspicuous consumption. Now, for me, I'm a middle-class citizen, and conspicuous consumption for me looks something like uh, something like in the sports that I play. Um, for instance, I am a surfer, and uh, during, in surfing, I have a surfboard, I have uh, a wetsuit, and there are certain things that allow me to, um, to do the sport that I like. For me, a middle-class citizen, conspicuous consumption looks like this traction pad. It's not necessary for my surfboard. It costs about 40 to $50, and it only gives me a little bit extra grip on my surfboard, something that this wax could do for me. I buy this not only to give me some extra traction, but also to look like I'm a good surfer, that I'm pulling off really crazy maneuvers, and that I know what I'm doing. Of high social class, conspicuous consumption could look like a extremely expensive car. A Rolls Royce, for example. Does a Rolls Royce really give you that much advantage in driving? I don't think so. Honestly, a Hyundai could do the exact same thing, but a Rolls Royce is probably about five times more expensive. The reason that a really rich person would want to buy this Rolls Royce is to maintain their view by other people in society. It is unnecessary but may give them a leg up when other people are looking at them. Low class citizen, conspicuous consumption could look something like a business suit. Someone is trying to get up in society, get a good job, and work hard. They're going in for an interview, and they're going to buy a really nice suit. Now, is it really necessary to buy a $600 suit when you could buy one at Goodwill for about maybe $80 or $50? I don't think so, but this person is trying to make an impression on someone else and they're going to buy the more expensive one so that they feel better about themselves and so that other people look at them and understand that they may be more rich than they really are. When I see someone of high upper class, sometimes I think that they're more stuck up or uh, egotistical than maybe I am. They have the nicest things. They have really nice cars, really nice houses, they do a lot of fun stuff, they go on vacations, and sometimes even just the media makes me feel like they are more stuck up, maybe a little more bratish, and uh, not as down to earth. Uh, considering middle class, uh, I am middle class, so I see middle class people as um, just kind of getting by, making the best of life, and um, not buying anything super expensive, just buying what's necessary 
and uh, and getting through life, doing doing the fun things, but also, um, but not stuck up, uh, living within their means. Uh, for lower class citizens, I see them as people who have just fallen on tough economic times. Uh, something hard is going on, and they just can't. They're it's just tough for them to live right now. Um, they're barely getting by. It's a, a pay, paycheck to paycheck basis, and uh, maybe the rents the rents high. Uh, they got a couple kids, and they just they're trying to make it work. I do not think that we should desire total social equality. Total social equality would make uh, the best become worse, and people who are very talented become clumsy and less talented. Uh, like Vanyat said, um, uh, the, the average person would have to come down to the lowest common denominator. Uh, the lowest person would be the standard and the most talented and best people would have to bring their talent down. And that is definitely something that we don't want to do as a society. Marx, Marx and Vonnet's perspective uh, have influenced me by re making me realize that uh, social equality may not uh, be always the best thing. Um, equality is not necessarily the uh, best thing for society, but um, striving to uh, give opportunities for equality uh, is definitely something that is important. Um, like Vanyat said, um, it's important that we don't bring other people down um, to try to make equality. Um, try not making sure that we're not bringing the best down to the worst to make that the equality, but giving opportunities for the lowest um, in the unequal, the have-nots, to become the haves. Number eight, how should we think of social stratification from a moral standpoint? I believe that um, morals uh, come into this when we start holding people back based on the caste system. I think that's immoral. Um, I think that we, we should never be the one to hold someone back from um, the plans that God has uh, set out for them. And if, we're, if we are um, putting them in a caste system and um, holding them in a certain area and not letting them work hard and, uh, and go up in, so in society, then that is immoral. I think the Christian response to social inequality should be one of love and of help. Um, I think that we should definitely be out on the streets uh, feeding the homeless, uh, clothing the homeless, and, uh, and spreading the good news of Christ through good deeds. Number nine. So for, for my family, uh, a lot of it is based on a caste type of structure, especially in my, um, my more extended family on both sides. Um, I'm not the oldest cousin, um, and so I have a lot of older cousins that are uh, married and stuff like that, so they are definitely further on in life, and as a result, they take the, the, uh, the higher place in the society of my family. Um, and that goes for my close family as well. Um, we, like, I am the firstborn, and so I have a few more privileges than my sister. Number 10, my ability to climb the socioeconomic ladder. Um, I believe that it is probably pretty good. I have a pretty good chance of doing so. Um, I've come from a good family, a good education and therefore I'm going to be able to uh, continue to move up. Um, but on the other hand, I'm already a middle class, upper middle class citizen, and moving up could be difficult as opposed to going from dirt poor to upper lower class or lower middle class. So um, I do strive to continue to climb the ladder of uh, social economic class and, um, and I think that is definitely possible. Thank you for joining me in my social stratification video. See ya.